That's it. Ralph! <laughs> Ralph? Hi, I'm Anna and this is my dog, Ralph. So I love running and I love dogs. So you can imagine my excitement when I brought Ralph home and waited patiently till he could become my new running buddy. So we have teamed up with DogFit who are gonna put us through our paces, learning how to run together. They're gonna to be giving us all the tips we need on what kit to use and how to run safely together. So should we go meet them? Yeah, come on then, let's go. <laughs> Come on. So I've got loads of questions to ask you because it's my first time running with my dog. I want to make sure that I get it right. Yeah. So I guess the first thing is, other than like the lead and harness setup, is there anything else in particular that I need to think about taking with me when I go for a run with Ralph? When you're setting out, you've obviously got to be considerate of the temperatures and where you're going to run as well. So it might be that, you know, you take some extra water with you for the dog. What sort of temperatures, like what's too hot for a dog? It is a sport for the cooler months. Yeah. And you would be mindful as the weather got warmer um, that you're not going out when it's too hot because it's not sometimes about the rise in temperature, but it's about the humidity. And also every dog is different. Mm. So um, if you're running your dog consistently all the year round, your dog is fit, um, you might decide that you do run a little bit through the summer months, but during the summer, you're actually running really early in the morning yeah. or late in the evening. So Ralph is 18 months old. Yeah. How old does a dog need to be to start doing canicross? Well, as a rule, we say the dog should at least be 12 months of age. Perfect. Um, and with the larger breeds, you might well want to wait until the dog is 18 months old. Yeah. And this is because, you know, the bones have not all developed properly. And we get a lot of inquiries from people that, you know, the dogs are typically get, getting to nine months old, full of energy. And people are thinking, oh, I'm going to start Canicross because, <laughs> you know, we're going to use up all that energy. But mm. really, you, you know, you must wait until they're at least a year old yeah. um, for that bone development to have all finished um, and the dog to be strong enough. Yeah. As an upper age limit, as long as your dog is, is fit, you know, you've, you've obviously had the go ahead from your vet as well as your dog gets older. Mm. And sometimes, you know, that whole keeping active is, is just brilliant for older dogs. Yeah. But if you are starting out with an older dog, you really take things very, very slowly and obviously starting walking, canny trekking mm. um, and then build up. OK, so how far can dogs run? Any distance, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but obviously, just like us, we, we really need to build them up to those longer distances. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are people canny crossing kind of ultra marathon distances, but those dogs re literally have built up over a long period of time. Mm. So it's about taking, just as like we would do for ourselves, you take things slowly, you'd follow a program week by week, you would add to that program. Yeah. And it's great when you are doing that training because you've got <laughs> your, your best friend doing it with you. Yeah. Um, That's so nice. So what you're saying is Ralph needs to do his couch to 5K basically. Yeah, but if you've done a really hard workout, you've done a long distance, you might have gone over you know, lots of hills, um, a rugged terrain, mm. you, might, you would give your dog an easy day, an easy next few days for sure. Yeah. Um, so they recover just like we do. Yeah, amazing. Do they need to have any special food or do they need to eat more or do we need to do anything with their diet at all for County Cross? Yeah, I mean, it's a consideration. Obviously, when you're starting out, there won't be any dramatic changes in the in the dog's appetite, um, but you, you should monitor how you think your dog is feeling. Mm. Um, with In terms of feeding your dog, uh, it's definitely important that you feed your dog two hours before you actually start the exercise. Right. Um, we often, if we run early in the morning, we wouldn't give breakfast before we go no. um, and obviously wait for um, a couple of hours afterwards before you feed them. And then uh, if you are doing those longer distances, definitely monitoring the weight on your dog and how your dog's condition is looking to check that it's getting enough food. So Canny Cross, is it for everyone? Yes, absolutely, and, and for every dog as, as well. Yeah. Mm. I think we've run with every breed, every <laughs> mixture of breeds. Yeah. And sometimes those little ones where people say, oh, I haven't got a big dog, mm. they are real pocket rockets. Yeah. And we've got friends that have run marathons with little tiny dogs. <laughs> okay, so thinking about like what terrain dogs should run on, not all of us are lucky enough to have somewhere like yeah. this on our doorstep to be able to come and run with our dogs. So if I were at home, for example, yeah. then there would be like pavements that I'd need to run on potentially to get somewhere that was off-road like what sort of terrain do we have to take into consideration when yeah. it comes to running with dogs well obviously the sport of canny cross is off-road trail running with your dog yeah um oh. and obviously in terms of considering the dog's ligaments joints and everything we do want to run on softer surfaces however yeah. for some people you have to run on the pavements to get to the park yeah 
um, and that's you know unavoidable. You wouldn't plan to do long distances at all. No. But in that that scenario, you would have to do that. Mm. But where you can seek those trails and and discover the the outside because yeah. you know I've had wonderful experiences discovering new places that I didn't even knew existed because I'm there with my dog having uh, a great time. So yeah, that's so nice. So is there anything in particular that you need to protect dogs' paws when you go running? Well, uh, for Canny Cross, we don't normally have them in booties, it, definitely in the UK. Um, I think you do need to consider if the temperatures are really extreme yeah. and you are running um, in extreme places, I think you would it would be a consideration. Yeah. As a general rule, dogs are designed to run barefoot um, <laughs> and the more that you're training up with them, you know, the paws... Um, are used to that terrain yeah uh, but I think if you were as I said in a, in a really cold environment you yeah. might want to consider that um, yeah. but obviously the dogs need the grip you know the claws are designed to give them stability as well they're four-wheel drive after all so yeah. <laughs> they need that and if you're putting boots on that you're you're stopping that so yeah um, definitely consider where you're running yeah so no alpha flies for Ralphie no no <laughs> So Canny Cross is obviously running with your dog. So let's not forget the fundamentals and the basics of running um, yeah. just because you're clipping your dog on. So you're still going to do warm ups and cool downs. Same for your dog? Yeah, absolutely. I think the two of you together, you know, when you start off, you would start off on a walk to start warming yourself up. Mm. You might want to stop, um, you know, after you've warmed up five, five minutes, 10 minutes or so and, and do some stretching yeah. um, and you know, obviously you're not, your dog's not going to start stretching with you, <laughs> <laughs> although I'll take a pretty focus, but um, yeah, you definitely want to do some of that dynamic stretching, then go yeah. for your run, and just as important at the end of your run as well, mm. um, to do some stretching, and give your dog a chance to cool down for his heart rate to come down as well, yeah. if it's been a little bit warm for him to cool down, rather than putting him straight in the car, and you know, especially if the car's a little bit warm as well. Yeah. So definitely um, consider all of those things at the end of your run. Perfect. So we need to have a look at what kit Ralph needs to be kitted up in in yes, order to run. I so know. should we take a look at some yeah, of the harnesses? Yeah, absolutely. Great. So Gail, the kit for me is something that I found really sort of hard to get my head around because you know, you can go on Amazon or like just Google whatever and just buy whatever, but how do you know that it's the right thing for your dog? I don't know, so that's why you're here to help me. So some people, think incorrectly that it's okay to just run your dog in an ordinary walking harness yeah but there is a massive difference so this has been specially designed for canning cross so it's a sports harness right so yeah. there's nothing getting in the way of the shoulder joints it doesn't dig into the ribs it's super comfortable if it gets wet that's okay it's yeah. lightweight and then there's so. two other bits that you obviously need as well you need the yes. bit for you mm -hmm. and the bit to connect that's you right, yes so the belts are important too so yeah. from the person's perspective just like the dog harness it needs to be you know a good fit mm. and it needs to be comfortable for running yeah but most importantly which you'll see when you put it on in a moment the pull comes through the hips. Right. It sits deliberately, this main padded bit here, this main section, yeah. sits on the top of your bottom. Oh, okay. Rather than around your waist. Because oh. when you get the pull from the dog, oh, yeah. it's pulling through your hips and yeah. you don't get that jarring in your back. Yeah. So, um, so this is, that's the belt. Well, just as important, we oh. need to attach the two of you together. <laughs> so, lead. Um, yeah, nice this is stretchy. like the bungee line that, that comes with it. But the whole point is when the dog pulls, this absorbs a lot of that shock and that yeah. pull through you know the tension through the line it gets absorbed yeah. by the bungee yeah so it's more of a steady pull rather than a jarring pull Perfect. so it's just three items yeah. that you need to get Easy. started yeah <laughs> great literally we just put this over his head like oh, so good boy. and then, then you just pull that through between his legs yeah and good then you boy. clip on both sides that's okay. it Great. Oh, well, thank you so much for all of the, that advice. Like, it's definitely put my mind at ease and I feel like I can go out and run with him. So hopefully you found that super helpful as much as I have and, you know, feel ready and raring to go with Ralphie. But if you do have any other questions when it comes to running with your dog, please leave them in the comments below. The guys at DogFit will answer them for you. And also, um, maybe you actually already go out running with your dog. And if you do, let me know some wonderful experiences that you have with your dog, because I'm going to have some with mine soon. And we'll see you for the next episode of Running With Your Dog on the Running Channel.